Hello everyone, my name is Richard from TurboSmart and today we're going to show you how to install our F-150 EM valve on 2.7 and 3.5 applications. Now while this can be installed on just regular ramps in your driveway, we're going to use our lift for this video just for ease of showing you how to install it. The tools needed for the job will include a ratchet, a 7mm socket, 8mm socket, 15mm socket, a 3mm Allen wrench, and a flathead screwdriver. All right, let's see what comes in the box with the brand new valve. So first we have an instruction card, which is probably how you found this video. We have a TurboSmart decal. These are the brackets that will hold your valve to the intercooler and secure it. We have the recirculation plug that will plug the OE hose. And we have the valve itself. As you can see here. Now we're gonna put the truck on the lift so we can show you how to install this. Okay, so first we're gonna start off by taking off this intercooler support. It's held down by two 15 millimeter bolts. Uh, I'm gonna use my gun here. Uh, you can use a ratchet, it's gonna do the same exact thing. But let's get to it. Cool, so the intercooler support is held in by these two little bushings here, so you can just pull down on it. And now the intercooler is hanging, so just be weary of that. All right, so now we're gonna start by removing the charge pipes and by removing this reset hose connected to the OE valve right here. So first I'm gonna start by removing the recirculation hose connected to the OE valve. It's pretty simple. You're just gonna grab this gray part right here and just rotate it counterclockwise and slide it off. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and take off the clip that holds the blow-off valve in place as well. You're gonna compress that little flat piece right there and you're gonna pull out at the same time. And there it is. So next we're gonna take off this little retaining clip here holding on the charge pipe. You can use a flathead or a pick, but we're just gonna wedge it in right here and kind of pry it off a little bit. So that's one side, that's the other. This is that retaining clip, make sure to set it aside, don't lose it. Right, so now we're gonna go ahead and separate the charge pipe from the intercooler, just apply a little bit of force on both sides and pull them apart. Let's see here. Cool, now just leave that there. It's helpful to leave it hanging so it doesn't fall on you. We take off these two charge pipe couplers. They're held on by these little constant tension clamps. This one's a little further up here, so we might need an extension for it, but we're gonna use a ratchet on this. It's a little bit easier, uh, a little bit easier on your hands, definitely. You could definitely use a screwdriver if you'd like as well. All right, so now we're gonna separate the two couplers from the intercooler itself. Same thing as the other side. We're just going to apply some pressure between the two. See the top's coming off pretty easily. It's surprising, that's usually the harder of the two. Okay, so the top is off. Push that out of the way. And then, now we just got this bottom one. All right, just as the other side, just be careful for this oil and get you dirty. All right, but with that, move out of the way, we should be able to drop this inner cooler out. Please note on Raptor models, there will be an additional set of fans on the inner cooler. Be sure to unplug the harness for these prior to removing the inner cooler. Now remember, before we pull and yank the inner cooler out, there's actually a harness clip right here connected to the, the plug that we unplugged earlier. So make sure that this is out so the intercooler can safely come out, otherwise it's gonna hang up on that. All right, so now that everything's disconnected, we're gonna go ahead and drop the intercooler out. There we go. All right, now that everything's disconnected, we can go and pull out the intercooler. Let's go ahead and put this on the table so we can show you how to remove the OE blow-off valve and install ours. Now that we have the intercooler out of the truck, we're gonna go ahead and remove the stock diverter valve. It's held down by this eight millimeter bolt. And once it's off of there, we can easily get it off. All right, now that that bolt's removed, we can go ahead and just rotate the diverter valve out of place. You can see there's these little grooves, so it can't rotate very far. All right, now that we have the valves next to each other, you can clearly see there's some big differences. Uh, obviously the main one being the size compared to the V-Port EM valve. Now, 
This valve is electronically controlled. This new EM F-150 valve is also electronically controlled, so gone are the days of reference lines and vacuum ports. This unit here is made of plastic, while this is a aircraft grade CNC billet aluminum, so this also does offer preventative maintenance in the future. Now another big feature is the OE valve uses a recirculation port, as you saw when we were removing it earlier in the video, and our valve uses a vent to atmosphere port, so you no longer have to worry about recirculation, it all vents to atmosphere. All right, installation's fairly easy. It's just like removing the stock valve. You're gonna make sure that these grooves line up with the tabs inside. So when you insert it, this solenoid's gonna be facing out this way. And when you fully put it in, the solenoid will be running virtually parallel with the intercooler. All right, now that we know that the valve is completely sealed onto the intercooler, we're gonna install this L bracket to secure it. Now you can see it will line up with this hole and also the hole on the actual valve itself. And you're going to use the provided bolt or the provided Allen screw to hold it in place there. Leave it loose so we can easily line up this. Now that we have the bolt securing the L bracket in place, we're gonna go ahead and come back to this screw on the valve and just make sure it's completely tightened. You can just go hand snug on it. So now we're going to install the blanking plug that we showed you at the beginning of the video back into the recirculation hose. This is the plug. Make sure that this tapered side goes in and rotate this collar back into place to lock it in. All right, so when we install the intercooler, make sure that you line these grommets up with the holes for them. Now you might need to wiggle it through since there's a few couplers and whatnot in the way. All right, let's go ahead and slide these charge pipe couplers back on. All right, for this side of the inner cooler, make sure that this line right here lines up this line. So when you put the clip back in, it'll be able to lock it in place. All right, go ahead and plug in the connector. And push it into place. All right, let's go ahead and put the intercooler support back on. We're gonna line up these two holes with these two grommets. Obviously the bolt ends will line up with where they were when we took it off. All right. So just thread them in to set the support in place. All right, now let's go ahead and screw them in. Just make sure the support is fully seated inside before you fully com completely tighten everything. It's all installed. And another thing here, this wire can hang loose. However, if you just want to be a little more secure, you can tuck it up behind the intercooler up here. Just make sure that there's not a lot of tension between the plug and the connector. That concludes our installation of the F-150 EM valve. Make sure to follow us on social media to see how we're keeping boost controlled. And with that, thank you so much for watching this video and we'll see you in the next one.